Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the enzyme activity experiment you, you would have done in class, and we talked about what kind of effect the change in concentration in pH and temperature would have had, had on the activity of your enzyme. In this video, we're going to cover something which is quite related, quite similar. I'll read the actual dot point. It says, explain why the maintenance of a constant internal environment is important for optimal metabolic efficiency. So before we start, we obviously the verb itself is explain. So we don't just have to be able to say that our constant internal environment affects our metabolic efficiency. We have to explain why as well. Obviously, we need to know what the constant internal environment is. That's just keeping something constant. So for example, keeping our body temperature at 37 degrees Celsius at all times or keeping our pH at 7 pH at all times. That's keeping constant internal environment. And then that optimal metabolic efficiency, that word as well. I'll go over that in a second. But before I start, I want to go over just a scenario. Just imagine you were living in Sydney um, and you start your trip in Penrith. So at Penrith in summer, you get up to 45 degrees Celsius. So you start your road trip in Penrith and that's just around about here on this map. And then you drive to Blue Mountains. That's about an hour's trip. And in the Blue Mountains, during summer, it can get to anywhere from 0 to 10. Depending on where you are, it can get even higher. But let's say you're quite high up and it's 0 to 10 degrees in the Blue Mountains. And Blue Mountains are around about here on the map. So that is only about 100 kilometers from Penrith to the Blue Mountains. And it'll take you about an hour. So we go from 45 degrees Celsius in Penrith to about 0 to 10 degrees Celsius in the Blue Mountains. And what would your... Um, internal temperature, your body temperature be in both in Penrith and in the Blue Mountains. So in Penrith you would have 37 degrees Celsius. Blue Mountains you would also have 37 degrees Celsius. So even though your outside temperature, your ambient temperature has changed quite a bit, your internal temperature has stayed constant, has stayed at 37 degrees Celsius. And this dot point is asking why. So why is this important? Why do we keep it at a constant internal environment no matter what our out external environment is. So I'll go over that now. So here we have two things. We have our, first I'm going to go over the definition of metabolic efficiency and then I'll talk about optimum conditions. So the word metabolic efficiency is what I'll define now. So the optimum metabolic efficiency is just how fast chemical reactions occur and that these chemical reactions occur at the optimum speed. So we have, for example, we have glucose breaking down to ATP, that's a chemical reaction, or we have amino acids coming together to form proteins, that's also chemical reactions. And if these occur at your optimum speed, so at the normal speed that they should occur at, that's your optimum metabolic efficiency. So that's what that word means, so that the chemical reactions occur at the normal speed. Now let's have two scenarios here. We have our optimum conditions, which might be for our body, for enzymes in our body, might be 37 degrees Celsius. Let's have our non-optimum conditions here. Let's say this is 30 degrees Celsius. And we'll see what happens in both these cases. So we have enzymes and substrates. So enzymes are the things that break down your substrates. So in this case, we have first we have this enzyme binding to the substrate. This is in our optimum conditions, so everything is perfect. And you can see the enzyme shape is perfect fit. It fits really well. So first we have that enzyme-substrate complex right here. And then what will happen is quite quickly, it will break down. Because it's a perfect fit, it can break down. So it'll break down to, into two products. It'll break down into two products. And once it does that, they're going to be removed again. And this happens quite fast because this is optimum conditions. So everything happens quite good, quite fast. So we go from our products initially, from our substrates, into two new products. And this happens at a fast rate. So at fast rate. But imagine if our not optimum conditions were present. What actually happens to this enzyme is it becomes denatured. So these two are denatured. And they're both the same thing. I'm just trying to show you what happens when they bind. So the problem now is that this actually can't bind properly. So because it's not that perfect shape, 
they'll have to actually try to find that perfect fit and that will take a lot longer which is why its speed of reaction is a lot shorter, like it takes a lot longer to happen because it can't fit properly and once it does fit it will also break into two as the other one did but yeah it just takes a lot longer, it's not as fast as it was with the optimum conditions so again I'll show you how it breaks into two but when it comes to not optimum conditions that just means it took a lot longer to happen as opposed to your optimum conditions so when it comes to this I will also give you a quick song which is the song which is from the intro I will attempt to sing it at my, at my best ability I'm actually a really bad singer but I'll sing it and then I'll explain why that's, I sang that song as well so I'll sing it now Oh, glucose, glucose, da na 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 na. Oh, sugar, sugar, da na 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 na. You help me make ATP. That was a really bad attempt at singing that song. But the point with that song is that um, we have. So let's say our substrate were glucose, and our products were ATP. So we break down glucose into ATP, and if we have no enzymes present, that would take way too long to happen. So if we have these enzymes, that means it happens a lot faster and we can actually get our energy. We need ATP because that's our energy. Without energy, we start dying. So if we have enough enzymes present that work at their optimum condition, so that means that they're not denatured, then we'll, we'll be able to survive. Whereas if we have our not optimum conditions, this will be too slow and we'll actually start dying. So what I'll show you as well next is actually a quick animation of just that. So I'll have different conditions our optimum conditions and our less optimum conditions and show you what happens when it comes to the enzyme activity. So on this graph we've just got enzyme activity in the top side and the temperature on the bottom side and you can see our enzyme activity is in reactions per second so this just means that if it's 70, again it's just imaginary, 70 means that you have 70 reactions per second that these enzymes do whereas if it's at 10 that means they do 10 reactions per second, so a lot slower than 70 so that's enzyme activity. So these at 70 they are more active than at 10. And also we have the temperature is just in degrees Celsius, so 0 to 70. And what you can imagine here is we have the same enzyme which is at different temperatures. So when we have it at 37 degrees Celsius, what's going to happen is it's going to break down the actual substrate really quickly into products because its activity is quite fast. Whereas if we have it a lot slower, so let's say it's at about 12 degrees or on the other flip side if it's about 55 degrees, so either too low or too high, what happens with the enzyme becomes denatured and you can see the rate of reaction is a lot slower, like it takes longer, probably about half as slow as it was beforehand, half as fast, and that's because the enzyme is denatured and it's, a perfect fit isn't there anymore as it was when it was the conditions were optimal. And now when we go even like further down to that, say 8 degrees roughly here and 62 degrees here, you can see the enzyme activity is at more or less zero. So what happens now is the substrate will try to fit but the enzyme is so denatured that the substrate can't fit at all anymore and there's absolutely no reaction happening at all. So that's how your enzyme activity or your metabolic efficiency is really important because chemical reactions occur in a body and enzymes are always really important when it comes to these chemical reactions. If they're not present, then nothing happens. And if they're denatured, that's more or less like they're not present, they're not working at all. So that's with, with um, temperature. But the same thing with pH. So here you would have your enzyme activity on the one side and you have your acidity or your pH on the other side. And if this were, for example, one in our small intestine or in our blood, an enzyme in our blood, then it would have its ideal optimum condition would be at about 7 pH and that would be here whereas if we go lower, so if we are, uh, go lower to here or go higher to here then you'd have a rate which would be a lot less ready so at about 5 or 4 or 5 pH or here and about 9 or 10 pH here you would have had your enzyme activity drop already quite significantly and then on, if it goes down even further let's say at pH of 1 or pH of almost 13 
then the enzyme or the metabolic efficiency is dropped to almost zero. So here it's 10 reactions per second as opposed to 70 reactions per second for the ideal. And this might mean that the enzyme is actually working so slow that it can't keep up with its normal rate. And then we don't get enough energy or whatever it is that it's making. Enzymes have so many different reactions that they speed up that if we have them not working properly, we basically f our body fails, more or less. So what I just showed you was one example. But there's different types of enzymes, different types of environments, and whatever their environment is they usually live in, that's the constant internal environment they have to maintain. So for example, if this is a rate of reaction on this side and this is temperature on this side, this one might be 37 degrees Celsius here, 37. This one might be 10 degrees Celsius. This one might be 50 degrees Celsius. Because they live in, these might be enzymes which come from different organisms which live in different environments. If it lives in 10 degrees Celsius, it would have to have a different perfect optimum um, level that it has to keep for it to work properly compared to a organism which usually lives in 50 degrees Celsius. So you can't just always say, you know, we have to keep it at 37 degrees Celsius. It depends on the organism. Some organisms have different types of ideal conditions. And the same thing with pH. So this was pepsin. This was trypsin. Pepsin comes from our stomach. Its ideal pH is around about 2 to 3 because that's the pH of our stomach. Trypsin is a small intestine, and its ideal pH is around about 7 to 8, and that's because it lives in our small intestine, and that small intestine has a normal pH of 7 to 8. So whatever the internal environment is for these enzymes that they usually live in, that's also the level they have to keep for it to work properly. They're all adapted to those environments. So for that dot point, explain why the maintenance of constant internal environment is important for optimal metabolic efficiency. Because if we have less than optimal conditions, that means our enzymes don't work as well as they could. They work slower. And our enzymes are responsible for more or less every chemical reaction that happens in our body. So if they work slower, that means we produce less ATP or proteins or whatever it is. And that means our metabolic efficiency has gone down. And then we don't get enough of what we need, and our body starts failing. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.